so critical appraisal comprises of two main parts the validity of the study and the applicability of the study the validity of the study is the closeness of the study to the truth how close is the study to reality and the applicability of the study is are the results applicable to the question or the population of patient that you are asking that question for so this is the gate framework it's a graphical representation and uh, any study can be looked at it from this framework and this was proposed by rod jackson and i would encourage all of you to uh, google rod, rod jackson and the gate framework and he has lectures all over on youtube is much more detailed information than that i can provide you i'll just give you an introduction but what you can do is you can draw an angle circle and a square and a cross at the edge of the paper that you are reading and fill out these uh, uh, areas and uh, use a mnemonic to uh, identify and critically appraisal uh, uh, appraise a paper so it starts with pcot which is very similar to pico Uh, P is for participants. E is for the exposure group. C is for the comparison. O is for the outcomes. And T is important. That is the time frame of the study. And all epidemiological studies can be hung on the gate framework. So, for example, this is a study by Dr. Raj Shekhar and his spine, 2013, where they looked at all patients who had spine surgery. They randomized these patients into two groups. One group had the exposure group. or the intervention group had a local intracyte vancomycin powder plus iv antibiotic and the control group only had iv antibiotic the outcome that they measured was surgical side infection and the time frame was uh, a minimum follow up of 12 weeks so accordingly here you are getting a good framework about how this study was done in in a in a broad sense and that paper you can use this mnemonic all the rambo man to analyze every step of this picot in terms of critically appraising it so in the participants uh, the first uh, letter of the mnemonic is recruitment then allocation allocation into the two groups exposure and control group then is maintenance how the uh, two groups were maintained then is blinding in terms of how the objective assessment was done and lastly is the analysis so if you remember these this mnemonic at every step you will be able to question the paper as to its validity or its closeness to the truth the first is the recruitment of participants you want to ask yourself the question who are these findings applicable to so you want to understand what is the study setting where it, whether it's a multi center or a single center uh, study who are the eligible participants what are the inclusion criteria and what are the exclusion criteria and out of these eligible uh, people how many people participated in the study because the in a, any study the participants have to give consent uh, uh, especially if it's a prospective study obviously and you want to ask yourself the question whether the participants in the study represent the eligible population or represent the target population that is being studied so this is a very important concept and you need to ask this question right at the beginning of the study because if if this is not done correctly you will add selection bias then the second step is allocation how the how the two groups were created so in randomized controlled trials you want to understand how the random sequence was generated if the random sequence was generated by just alternating the patients in the two groups then it is a wrong method of randomization so there are several methods of randomization you need to understand which ones are uh, acceptable and which ones are uh, accurate and then the second uh, aspect of randomization is whether the randomization was concealed or not because if the person who is assigning uh, the patient into the two groups knows about how the person is being randomized that patient subconsciously or consciously might change the person's mind or his allocation so the person who is going to allocate that person into different groups should not know 
uh, where the person is going to go until the last minute, until the envelope is open. If it is a non-randomized study, uh, a comparative cohort study, then you want to ask yourself the question, was the selection of the cohort accurate? What is the definition of that cohort which divided these uh, group of uh, patients into the two groups? So, uh, and finally is the, uh, uh, were these two groups that have been created uh, similar at baseline? If randomization has been done correctly and if it's a sufficiently large sample automatically the two groups uh, more or less will be adjusted for baseline differences for the known and the unknown differences. Maintenance means did the participants remain allocated to those groups that they were assigned to. And it's important that you look at it from two aspects. One is completeness of follow-up and the other is compliance. So you need uh, patients uh, follow up at least more than 80% in each group. If the loss to follow up is more than 20%, then it is difficult to compare both groups, especially if the rate of follow up in both groups is different. So 20 more or less can be considered as a threshold. And uh, the follow up duration has to be meaningful for the outcome that you are studying. So uh, if the follow up duration is very short, then even though you may have a completeness of the follow-up, it doesn't mean uh, much in terms of interpreting the results. And then it is, it is the compliance issue that is also important because if you randomize patients into two groups, the surgery and the conservative groups, ideally at the end of the surgery, the people who are assigned into surgery have to stay into the surgery group, whereas those who are in the conservative group has to stay in the conservative group. But many times in real life, what happens is that some people from the surgery group cross over into the conservative side and some conservative group patients who are significantly disabled will change their mind and go into the surgery group. So that is called as a crossover. So that has to be as less as possible. Everybody knows about blinding. It prevents bias or assessment of outcome. So whoever is assessing the outcome needs to be blinded as much as possible to the intervention. And finally is the object, objective measurement. Were the outcomes measured objectively? It cannot be something very vague like ODOMS criteria or something. It needs to be a validated measuring tool like an ODI score. And last part of the mnemonic is analysis. Whether the exposure group and the control group were the same at the baseline, even if it is randomized uh, trial, you need to look at both groups, whether they are as similar as possible or not. Second is intention to treat. So irrespective of the crossover, those people who are assigned to one group have to be analyzed with respect to the other group. And you cannot analyze patients in an as treated fashion because this is a lower level of evidence and in increases the bias. And finally, whether you have 95% confidence limit, how much is the accuracy of your result and whether an a priori power calculation has been done to assess the sample size. So all these steps or the mnemonic help you go through a paper uh, in a systematic manner and the critical analysis essentially is to identify systematic bias. That's what it is about. Thank you very much.